Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Match number two of the weekend, or at least the European side of the weekend. I'm F. Don, he's Adonis, and we are going to take a look at Leftovers versus Team Astro, as these are the squads that have wound up on the top of the Challenger Cup or the open bracket. Uh... A quick dismantling by Torpedo Gaming uh, of Loyal there, 3-0. But to be fair, I mean, they had to go up against Torpedo, and that's honestly a squad that has been scrimming top teams in Europe right now. It's an understandable right. loss for them. I mean, people are saying right now that they're a top four. Just, just kind of like problem solved in scrims, like they are winning. They are a top four team. We'll have to see if Torpedo can make it into the SBL. But yeah, leftovers. Badge's yeah. new squad coming in. Uh, some veteranship in him, and he's going to be bringing on a... a a lot of new talent, uh, and it's going to be interesting to me to see how he can take them, or if he can take them to the next level. Because, you know, he had been with Fnatic for I, I think going on two to three years. It's been a while. He's been laning with Reels for three years. That I know for a mm -hmm. fact. And it's going to be interesting to see because now he's with a new hunter who doesn't have that experience. And when you kind of looked at Reels, right. it was when did he ever mess up? Right? He's <laughs> always been in the contention sure. for one of the best hunters in the world. And now Badja has to take this new team. Right. Uh, you know, we saw something like this similar uh, in season over two with Raffer. Again, a support. Yes. A lot of yes. parallels to the squad. A support coming out of the woodwork to really take a bunch of unknowns for the most part and put them together on a team. The difference was a lot of those unknowns had some, uh, with, with respect to Raffer's situation, a lot of those unknowns had some experience, a little bit of experience. behind them. Like, Jimmy was not a They stranger. weren't successful, but they right. had experience at exactly. the very least. I mean, when I look at this roster with players like Arkel and stuff, you know, the same thing doesn't necessarily come to mind, but that's not to say that there aren't diamonds in the rough. I mean, Polar Bear Mike came out of relative obscurity, so Badger trying to make his money ball play work. And we take a look at Team Astro as well, a team that did very, very well during the Challenger Cup season. And I actually, I'm kind of a fan of Astro as well. I think they performed very well in open relegations. Um, I, I mean, Ducky in the solo lane, yeah. just so good. Um, and, you know, he's kind of, been around, I think, on the verge of, you know, high end challenger for a while. Sanjo as well. He's someone with a little bit of XP, uh, SPL experience. He played a little bit for Justice near the end of the season. Mm -hmm. um, Wolfie has kind of been. I always see him. He's he's been. I'm like I like I, I can never remember exactly what he's done, but I'm like I recognize that name. Wolfie was a so not. 2032. Hold your 2032. 3 right? Uh, no, Wolfie was the substitute for Team Solo Mid European style when oh, they won the launch yes. tournament. Wolfie has been on the cusp wow. of pro play for years on years on years. I, I wonder if it's been his play or just, you know, nothing ever lined up for him yeah. to ever work out. Because that's kind of like adapting. Adapting, um, I mean, now known as the best player in the world, <laughs> at least from my lips. Um, but he was on teams that just barely didn't make it for right. so long. So maybe we could see Wolfie make it in. But he's going to be facing off against Badja and the Leftovers. Let's take a quick look at Picks and Bands getting the game one. P's and B's, pretty please, and Team Leftover on the left, Team Astro on the right. Predictable bands coming out right now. Uh, I expect to see Giannis, I expect to see Robin, I expect to see a lot of what we have been seeing over these past two weekends, and there you go. Amaterasu uh, is available. We uh, saw her have, I would say, minimal impact in that last set. Sure. Um, I think Torpedo really didn't care about Amaterasu, and they knew how to play play kind of around her and her kit. Let's see uh, what these teams decide, and no hesitation yep. from Leftovers. They're they're gonna grab Amy. Yeah, Leftovers solo laner Nika uh, must be must have put in a lot of effort into this god, and I think that Amaterasu was a threat. But I don't think she is necessarily a must-ban threat in the world of Robin. I think that what Amaterasu brings to the table is more uh, defensive and more chunky bruiser in the front line. Think of, think of gods that you expect to see in front of the team while the rest of the team pushes down a tower. That's what Amy does, and that's what leftovers want to see out of her with that first pick. Hunbats and Isis, though, picked up on the right side, so looking for a little bit of disruption out of their jungler. Isis has uh, skyrocketed, honestly, um, mm. into it, her pick priority right now. A lot of the game relies on getting early pressure, and more importantly than early pressure in the lanes, the ability to rotate and invade the opponent's boars. Sure. Boars are worth so much, and that's exactly what Isis provides. She provides a very strong early game, high wave clear, good fight potential. She doesn't necessarily have the strongest ultimate for, like, I'm going to gank you, but right. it's very good if a, a fight does break out. Exactly, and a lot of times Isis really excels at that CQC, the, the, the stuns on the Isis ultimate when everybody's shoved in that left corner, so... Isis ultimate, definitely a bigger deal in the jungle. I, I like the Athena pickup uh, in response to the Isis. Of course. Uh, Athena, very good. Uh, and honestly, you can, you know, there's the basic <laughs> level of, okay, I can cancel out wing gusts, but Athena is that 
uh, kind of middle of the road support, right? You have your very aggressive supports like Ymir, Ares. You have defensive like you know Geb. Sylvanas kind of is, is, no, is no, defensive. No, it's, she's um, defensive. For but sure. uh, Athena is kind of in the middle, right? Where she is very aggressive. She wants to force <laughs> stuff. And I, I like this because I leftovers like have a very strong duo lane, and that just going to be able to rotate and put pressure on this Isis and make sure that Astro can't get anything rolling early because of it. I mean, that's a good analysis. Athena definitely is the Goldilocks planet of supports, if you will. But at the end of the day, you could put Athena on any team, and I, you think, can. It's, I think it's a positive. It's, it's like an Agni. You can never yeah. go wrong with Athena. Exactly. And although that's not the qu quite the case with Vamana, uh, here in Season 3, that's almost the case. Vamana seems to benefit any team as long as, as long as Odin's really out of the picture, and Team Astro and confirms that last part with the ban. That was a very smart ban uh, oh, yeah. of Odin. Odin right now worth so much, especially considering a lot of the top picks don't have uh, any way to escape, right? Amaterasu. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, all supports, obviously. Chiron, uh, Isis, Vamon, all these picks, they get locked in the cage. It's going to be Kronos picked up, and, and Europe really seems to love Kronos. Uh, North America hasn't really been playing <laughs> it too much, but we've seen a lot of strong play, quick picks, and bans from it. Well, Kronos is a character that just goes out of his mind. Doom Orb, uh, all mages were helped with Doom Orb, but you, you hear talk about Scylla. Kronos is in the same category. And, I mean, uh, to look at ranked play, Kronos is the god that Zeros r drove all the way to Grandmasters as the first player, so Ooh. definitely a powerful Speaking guy. Speaking of Zeros, he's one of the few people to uh, play Raw. You can see right there, Raw, zero pick, zero ban percentage. <laughs> it's going to be his first time of play in Season 3. Actually, no, he played yeah, we saw Open Relegations. I don't, yep. I, yeah, I think these stats for are only from uh, a little bit further down the road but uh raw has a lot of setup on his team right thor mm -hmm. uh athena all very good at allowing the rock to confirm his damage most importantly uh, his ultimate which it, it swings people forget how oh, much yeah. damage it does especially now with doom orb in the meta exactly and again you know doom orb comes back and sure all mages are granted doom orb, the, the doom orb capability but Ra's allowed to build almost full full cooldown reduction and we're likely to see that and with that doom orb in tow it doesn't hurt his damage too much and Sherio is a player that we have seen time and time again really come together with this situation a lot of times we see it combined with the naja of fails which is exactly why you saw team astro ban out naja it wouldn't exactly be a good pick Composition-wise, but fails now known as Jungler. Why did he change his name, man? Just <sighs> come on, bro. That's like the guy. That's like the guy named Freya that plays for Xbox. <laughs> no, see, Freya, Freya's worse because Freya is not always guaranteed Freya. Plus, he plays support, so sometimes it's Freya supporting Freya. At least fails now known as Jungler is always going to be the Jungler. Come on, man. What if he switches <laughs> roles? Well, then he'll. I, I will. Make but what? Him wait. Name change. <laughs> like I will. I will give you the gems to name change, just so I don't have to deal with this during a cast. Uh, I really like Cherio though. Um, last year uh, on London Conspiracy, he was a Jungler, but mm -hmm. uh, and he was for me. I really enjoyed his play because he he always picked gods that fit his team composition. He played oh, yeah. around a team. He played around you know the style that the team had drafted. He didn't necessarily just press buttons. He thought about the game. And I mean that goes so far to see Cherio has always been the team player. With uh, he started off on a team, uh, upcoming stars playing one position, switching to another when they got a new prospect that could play mm -hmm. uh, support better than he. So he switched over to jungle. He's always really been the team player, and that extends to his. He well. has been killing it on not only mi like mid lane, but more specifically raw. Like he is yeah. hitting these snipes, and and he doesn't have the best ping. Like full context <laughs> for people who don't know, uh, I believe Cherio is from Egypt. He yes. doesn't, you know, he doesn't get the best ping to the European servers, but he is still hitting multiple players with these snipes. He is so smart. He is just so intelligent, and his mechanics are so much better. I, I think shown through his mid play than they were in the jungle. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, God forbid he actually makes it to land like he did last year at the Super Regionals, and you guys really get gifted a treat as far as how well this guy plays. But for now, he's in relegations, trying to make his way into SPL, let alone, post, oh. let alone postseason land. So. Just short, Sanjo still level one, hasn't been Oof. able to get any bit of that wave. You can see Thor level three here. I'd like to see Jungler to be really aggressive on this mm -hmm. because Sanjo can't fight this and they're just allowing the farm. And that's the one thing, right? We talked about how Isis has so much pressure, but Thor does as well. And oh, one yeah. of the few gods that can actually match Isis and pressure early is Ra. He can heal the creeps, uh, most importantly, when the wing gust comes through, that yep. way uh, Isis can't full clear. And you even saw it there. Isis didn't wing gust because he knew he knew that Cherio would immediately drop that heal on the creeps. And then, the, of course, the more obvious is that Searing... Uh, the, it also clears yeah, very It quickly. just clears 
stupid fast as well. So Ra, definitely definitely a good choice for going head-to-head -head against Isis. As long as you can play safe enough to not die constantly, and you know that's really what Cherio is going to be looking for. That's what Astro is going to be looking for, making sure that Cherio uh, isn't as safe as he wants to be. And here we see Nika in the soul lane on the Samaterasu. A little bit different flavor than the jungle that we saw last match, mm -hmm. but should be very interesting matchup here. What's your take on the uh, the Vamana versus Amaterasu? I, I mean, Vamana's just going to bully Amaterasu early. She can't really clear. She struggles early, and, and that's what Ducky needs to do. He needs to put the pressure on her, make sure she can't get too fed, or at the very least that he gets a lead. Because once Amaterasu you know, kind of hits level 6, 7, oh, she yeah. starts being fine in lane. She can clear a little bit better, but early on, can't do much. A little bit of aggressive play coming out from Leftovers. They find themselves in Astro's left side jungle. Just enough to push fight. down Boars. This is going to be aggressive, though. Big Mez coming out of the Kumba Karna, and everybody's here. Four on four here on the left-hand side. There's the snipe. Cherio Doesn't puts his team him. on the board for number one of the match. And Argyll, with the follow-up kill, puts two on the board. Astro trails 2-0. You know, I, I really like that. You, you saw the Kumba find the multi-man Mez, and immediately no one breaks the Mez. Sancho hits the overhand smash, hits yep. All four players, a good amount of poke, but the problem is that that heal was ticking. A little bit of pressure in the mid, but that's all it is. A little bit of poke. And that's the thing, right? You know, Sanjo, or excuse me, Cherio, the heal isn't that strong, but it's enough to help the team. <laughs> and it's funny that that's how that exchange went, because we started this game singing the praises of Cherio and how he's able that, that, to really that's fill... That's my first dirty tale. That's what I'm saying. And how he's able to fill multiple spots of whatever his team needs. Well, that... That exchange went successful for leftovers because of the heal and the damage coming out from Cherio. Well, those right side harpies going the way of leftovers. But so Cherio really uh, just. I don't think San his Sanjo wasn't five play. either in that fight, which was important, oh, yeah. fortunate. Oh, yeah. And that goes back to the early game where we saw the Thor level three and Sanjo was only level one. No level five available. If you had Fear No Evil, if he had farmed a little bit better or uh, was yes. able to secure more camps, that fight could have gone. Completely different. Coulda. It definitely would have. I mean, Hunbats is a Magikarp Gyarados character, 4 to 5, right? He, he just, <laughs> he just, never thought about he just like doesn't that. exist before level 5. And then once he does, Fear No Evil destroys team fights. Are, you, are you telling me that like all Hunbats can do before level 5 is just you splash and piss you off? And then one out of 100 shots, he gets that crit and steals your kill in the mid-Harpies fight? Yeah, that's what happens with Hunbats. <laughs> Every once in a while, he lands that slow and gets the kill early. Like but a, most of the time, like, you're waiting for like Fear No Evil. It's like 30% or 20%, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a one out of a hundred shot. Yeah, Leftovers, it's though, hard. find themselves with a pretty early 1,300 lead. 500, obviously, from the first gold bounty. Um, 1,600 experience, though, and that's what's important to me, right? You take a look. Um, the dual lane is a little bit behind. Actually, pretty significantly behind. You see uh, the Kronos... Uh, getting pressured out a lot, especially by Arkyle on this Chiron. Two levels down, and that's exactly what Chiron does. He oh, yeah. pressures you out, and it allows him to rotate. And I think we could start to see that Leftovers will start putting out that pressure and then allowing Arkyle to make his way over to the team fights and make an impact while Wolfie's still stuck in duo. <laughs> stuck in duo is the perfect way to put it because that's how that's, that's exactly what this pressure does. It, it forces you to stay in that lane and unable to really rotate, which is what you want to be doing uh, as the game gets later and later. Uh, I, I almost thought it was a thousand K, a thousand lead a on the thousand duel lane. K? A thousand K? A thousand K, whatever, whatever, a thousand. <laughs> uh, quick gank by jungler though. He's going to look towards the right side, smacks nice Vamana, combo. perfect wall. Vamana gets back up into the big baby. Mamika says, no way, hell no. Ducky falls down, but important important that that wall was positioned where it was, Kevin. Knock up, though, on Ziggox here in the mid lane. Nice taunt by Badger to not allow the follow-up. Cherio, he's on half, getting chased down there. Let's see if the Anult on top. Damage reduction not going to be enough. Yep. They're all tries to go off, but can't get off in time. Difference between Magikarp and Gyarados. Right there. <laughs> That's a team fight. All right. Went successfully. I, uh, very nice combo, though. Quick quick blink hit by Ziggox. Send him up to the sky. I loved mm -hmm. Badger there. I was able to taunt away the opposition, so they couldn't line up their stuns or their damage the second Cherio landed. But still, it was still a 3v1, um, essentially. And Cherio on Raw can't really jump out of that. Not at all. That, that's, Especially with Boots 1. Yeah, that's the Achilles heel of, of the Raw pick right there. There is no defensive maneuver. All he has is a slow. So not really available to him. So... Is Zygox the pronunciation? Because because I, I remember I was saying I don't know man I was saying Zygox last week and Zygox? and everybody was making fun of us Zygox? but nobody sent us a message. 
I don't know. Which is always how that goes. How am I supposed like Adonis like I'm not even pronouncing it right. I just like that's like a wow random name generator. <laughs> I was like, this sounds like Adonis. It's probably not exactly how Blizzard meant it, but hey man, that's that's how I'm taking it. As long you know what our pronunciation is still gonna be leaps and bounds over allies Al Quang. Al Quang. So. <laughs> and Amaratsu. Amaratsu, yeah, I heard Amaratsu. That. I like, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, Allied, have so. fun. I, I think we got one up on there. Six and a half on the clock. Three to one read the kills for leftovers. Uh, and they're leading the game by 1,500, which is a uh, small lead, but here this early in the game is relatively a decent enough lead to start talking about it. Important. Rapio in this mid lane. Um, not in the Hunter roll, just to note, even though he's dictated as that. Uh, Finish the Warlock Sash, starting to, to build it up, but he doesn't really have a lot right now. Still mm -hmm. no movement speed. I would like to see Jungler and Chariot try and just combo him down very quickly because he can't really escape, right? Even if he beats the Thor stun, there's still so much damage and he doesn't have the movement speed to juke out enough. He's going to be stuck under the tower and look mm -hmm. at this. I think that's exactly what Leftovers is looking for. Yeah, Leftovers grouping up here on the right side, trying to hide behind some walls, but taunt. now making themselves known. Counter there's a blink. taunt blink, but the ultimate out of Cherio not going to hit because of the beads of the taunt. Goomba Karna looking for a strong root and Badger will deal the damage. And they're looking for a couple of basics while Nika takes out Zygox on the side. Ducky's got nowhere to go, so he's going to go large. Damage. And there's the double tap. Nika, though, gets the double kill. Sanju on the side, taking out the jungler. And now Badge is in some trouble. Nika trying to help no out. Mana. But Wolfie takes out the support before Nika could show up. And Cherio going to fall this time around, surrounded by the monkey. And Cherio takes a spill. Three, That's four, one. Really nice fight coming out from Astro. My, my favorite was the start of that fight. It looked a little bit sloppy for them, and, and now I think they're going to be forcing the Gold Fury here. I mean, they sh it's a, I guess it's a little bit risky, especially with uh, Arkeel still online and Wolfie uh, not able to do anything. But they find three. What I, 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 I love Ziggox counter blink immediately. Mm -hmm. He noticed that Badjo wanted to be aggressive. The dash in immediately counter blinks, knocks up Thor and this guy. But the problem was... Uh, it was a little bit awkward because Sanjo also dropped Fear No Evil at the same time. A little <laughs> bit sloppy at the start, but they recovered nicely. And more importantly, what happened is that Leftovers, their carry split away from their support players. And, you know, Athena was trying to be aggressive, but his supports were getting dove. They got split off, mm -hmm. and Astro able to pick him up. And then one of the, the one of the beginning issues that Astro capitalized off of well was the fact that Leftovers, I mean, they showed their hand and then some. Leftovers said, hey, I have somebody that's going to deal damage after you get taunted. Are you ready? Hey, are you ready? And then they went in, which that's why the counter blink and the beads out of Isis were just so ready to, ready to be used. Nika. So Astro with a good heads up play there to avoid a lot of the damage that could have come out. I think he should be fine here. Has breastplate, boost yeah. three online. So uh, the double physical damage, not going to help a lot. Gold three are going to be started up here, but it looks like more of a bait. Badge looking for a taunt. Oh, a mm. little bit missed time there. Miscommunication coming out from the support in the mid laner. But we're seeing, you know, we're seeing what makes this work so often is that Chario is always going to rely on that badge. Actually, I think that was perfect communication. The problem was it just Badja made the the wrong call or was unaware, right? He's like, alt. The second what what Badja did uh, from what I could tell is he said the second I dash in ult because I'm immediately sure. going to yeah, talk. Right, right. The problem was that. Astro recognized that and they immediately backed off. He was looking for Rapio because still Boots not online and he knew that if he could hit the snipe that that'd be mm -hmm. so much damage and she'd be at half and they could probably chase her down. But unfortunately for him, just a little bit out of range, Rapio recognizes it, takes a couple step back, t a couple steps back and he's fine. Yeah, uh, although that one didn't work out, we're seeing why uh, this combo does work because as I said, Cherio just uh, relies on mm -hmm. that taunt to work out every time and sometimes it doesn't but when it works we it's see like people it's Ch like Chariot can hit some really nice snipes without setup but sure. it's too unreliant yeah. to base your like to base your gameplay around there I mean we mentioned before he's he's certainly a team player so uh, playing for the win instead of the highlight reel and team Astro doing the same as well positioning themselves around the gold fury looking more for a fight it seems than the objective itself and I like this bait from them. Um, it's really dangerous to start the Gold Fury, especially considering that uh, Leftovers have Floor. He can come crashing down, and that also combines very well. Cherio's ult, his ult is already back up, and that's something mm -hmm. to note, too, that we don't see a lot of raw play, but people forget how low of a cooldown that ultimate is. I believe it's 60 seconds um, when you start it off, and then if you get any CDR, it can get down to, like, 35. Yeah, it's, you can, it's, you'll see it, like, twice during a team fight, and an extended engagement's three or four times. Yeah, you can bring that, that raw ultimate very low. Ooh, here, Chrono's looking to get caught very low. There's a ton of stuff. They're going to force the ult. Nice. 
And Badger confirms the kill just before clean. Wolfie could rewind. Wow. Really clean bait. They knew that they were just going to all in him really quickly, and there was really nothing the Kronos could do. He didn't have his purification online, and basically the only chance he had was to press rewind the second the Athena taunted him. And that's just like a little bit too, you're like, okay, I think I can survive this. No, I can't. And mid lane, or near it at least, Rapio gets taunted. There's the immediate ult out of Isis, hoping for some heal, but it's negated by the hit out of the Hunter. Right hand side, separate fight, jungler v jungler. And the mid lane just gonna dodge the ultimate out of Cherio. So that's not gonna be a good look for leftovers. But big in the baby is Vamana, and Ducky laying it down. Badger just trying to get out though. Nika's rotated over and Ducky not going to be able to lock him down, and now Leftovers, they're going to group up and heal Should off reset. this raw. I like this. Uh, a little bit awkward from Sanja there. He ults. Uh, it looked like trying to fight Cherio, but he doesn't have the damage online to really do that yet, especially considering that raw with his passive speed of light could just use abilities. He has a lot of movement speed, could create distance between himself and Sanjo, and the Thor is mm -hmm. in the air as well. Yeah. I think it might have been smarter to just immediately jump away or, or look to try and help the Isis, because honestly, that's just luck, right? Cherio missed his ult. <laughs> Cherio missed his ult. By a hair. By a hair, right? And if he had secured that, I mean, that could have been much worse for Astro instead of a, just a clean zero for zero. Well, could have, should have, would have. But right now, Astro's feeling good about that one. No trade either way. Uh, and despite the fact that they're trailing behind, things things feel very Whoa. even here. 1,700 gold, but more importantly, Rapio picked up tank boots. Yeah, Rapio picked up tank boots, and he's also been building the, uh, the, the Warlock Sash. So look for look for a very tanky and support-oriented Isis here. You know, I l <laughs> this is interesting. I'm a little bit worried about this. Okay. Because I, I, I do like your Isis building tanky, especially when you have a carry like Kronos. But the problem is they don't have hard enough carries, right? Astro, they have a lot of... AoE damage as Rapio in a little bit of trouble. And there's the ultimate out of the jungler. Badger all by his lonesome. Sanjo puts number five on the board for Team Astro. Cherio quickly turns tail and walks directly away. That is Leftovers not recognizing what Rapio built. We were just talking about it, right? He's yep. got Warlock Sash, he's got 60 stacks on it, and he has tank boots, right? The Raw has pin boots and Doom Orb. In any normal situation against a player level down, especially <laughs> considering Cherio just got his ult to level three, uh -huh. you could take it. But Gold Fury started in the meantime. Jungler's gonna look at it and land right on down on top of the middle. Now looking towards the players instead of the objective. Jungler's gonna find a way out. Sandro's gonna give a little bit of chase, but there's a hit on the Badger. He's in Sleepy, but it's just a couple of basics. Can't confirm though, as Nika is chased out by the mid lane Wolfie, so he's gonna find a way out on the left hand side, and that should be a reset. That, that takes so much restraint, and I love that play from Nika. Yeah. Pop sleepy time, but more importantly, doesn't sit there and try an auto attack. He's almost guaranteed to die in that situation. Better to reset. Leftovers get gold fury for it. Nika, though, could be in a little bit of trouble, as it looks like Astro wants to fight. It does. Great play by Badger, though. Going to activate the sprint, and the team will split up, forcing Astro to really choose who they want to go after. Clean and disengage. The answer is nobody. Ducky's Ducky. going to be stuck. There's a hit from Cherio and everybody else. Oh. The ultimate doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. Arkel secures the kill onto the big baby. Sanjo, nowhere to go but home. Nika puts him in the ground for kill number eight. I mean, that was numbers. such a clean disengage from leftovers. It was perfect. There was clearly no opportunity, especially yeah. considering Ducky was the only one close. And instead, he chases super deep and then takes very poor very poor path and gets caught out and bursted. He thought he was a lot tankier than he actually was, and now Ziggox gonna be in a little bit of trouble. Tier one's pressure, but it looks like Leftovers just want to take the tower and just uh, not trying to force any more fights. Yeah, just small little victories coming out here for the blue squad, or at least that's what it seems like they're looking for. 15 on the clock, or just underneath it, and Leftovers leading by a pretty 3,700 gold. Nice and even there, folks, uh, after a gold fear and a couple of wins as far as the skirmishes are concerned. Here, here's the thing, right? I love what Leftovers have been doing all game, right? Even though they lost that 3-for-1 early, they know that their team comp is based around being very aggressive early, right? Because the later they go in this game, Astros, you know, they're only going to get better. Arkyle should be able to get out of this one. But the later this game goes, just the stronger Kronos is going to get, the stronger Vamana is going to get. And you have your Isis and... and um, excuse me, Kumikarna for mm -hmm. displacement. And that's why the ISIS right. is building tanky. So leftovers are trying to be aggressive and force stuff. But Astro is not just giving it to them, right? They're going to take the fight deep in their own jungle, but they played it so cleanly all game. And then they just mess up. Ducky gets caught and then Sanjo's there as well, trying to help him out. And now it's a 4K gold lead. Instead, 
when they were only down 1,300 early. Yeah, a big part of that, as you said, is, is you mentioned Ducky, and that's what I'm seeing a lot of, honestly. Uh, this Vermont, he got ganked early in his lane, and that's, you know, nobody's fault. It just sort of happens. But we've seen a couple of times that Cherio beads away the Fear No Evil, but still dances around in his heel. Should be fine. fine. Actually, he changed that. Now he's surrounded, and there's the ultimate out of Isis. I think it's going to show up as well. Thor's in the air. Looking to land on three as Cherio hits one. Sanjo taking a ton of damage, and Ducky able to put a in into the mid laner. Big jungler baby looking for Rapio on the fight. side, and Sanjo still very low, but Ducky going to take out Jungler before he takes out Sanjo. Nika finishes what Jungler started. Now the big baby, very low. Arkel with the kill out of that one, and this Wolfie. one seems to be going the way of leftovers. They only lost two, but they've taken out four. Zigok sends one to the sky, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to be chased down. Could hit the root, but Nika and Arkyle dodge it and now slowed, and Nika's going to finish the kill. That's going to be a four for two mm. when all is said and done, and that was Astro, right? They spent so much into trying to kill Cherio, and then he didn't die immediately, right? And instead of immediately backing off and resetting the fight, they continued to be aggressive, but all their ultimates were down. Thor comes crashing in, finds like three or four in the stun, and then... It was just Arkai was able to rotate in because the fight had gone on for about 30 seconds. It was exactly. once again Team Astro not recognizing their team comp and trying to play defensively. They're playing leftovers game right now. That was the old that was the old pick turns into a team fight. They tried to get Ch Ch Cherry on the pick and it looked great. All of a sudden he was surrounded by four players, but the Athena comes out of nowhere, the Thor comes out of nowhere as you mentioned, and what seems to be a four on one quickly turns into an even battle. And Astro at the moment can't really take an even battle on somebody else's terms as they're trailing by like 5k. So Astro really need to find a footing in this one. And you, you take a look and I like the fact that Isis has built this defensive. In fact, uh, this is the build that I preached all of last year. I said, hey, this be is, more this tanky. This is too defensive, though, right? Exactly. They don't, they don't have the damage, right? They need the Isis to be doing a lot of damage right exactly. now, especially considering that Sanjo has built into tank as well. Look, he's got Breastplate online, as well as Ducky. He doesn't have enough damage. He has zero damage mm -hmm. items right now. He has boots. And while Vamana has very high, you know, base abilities, the fact that no one, there's literally no one on Astro with damage yeah. right now. Honestly, the Kumba with CDR boots is probably doing more than anyone else. This is this is the, the Kronos carry project, and basically what I was going to say is I, I like this build on Isis, but situationally, unfortunately for Astro, since they're behind, the build isn't helping. They need to be even or ahead, because if they're behind, you need you need Isis to provide more of, more of the damage, as you said. I, I'd like to go back a little bit on what I said. They do have damage. But the problem is they don't have burst damage, right? And they're going up against a raw. And any time that Leftovers are able to reset the fight, mm -hmm. back off, they're just going to be able to pop that raw heal down and then come back stronger. Astro sure. really don't have a lot of self... They have, a, they have decent self-sustain, but it's not a raw heal level. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I on your original statement... You were still right there. There just isn't a lot of damage. They're waiting for this Kronos to really come online, which is going to take, since he went Telkine's ring, probably another item uh, before we see probably the Obsidian. Whatever, whatever penetration item mm -hmm. Kronos chooses to go is where we're going to see him really start to lift off. And unfortunately, the, the baby... I mean, part of what brought him on it back into into the meta is the fact that you don't have to bull tank, full tank on him for him to be effective. Unfortunately, Astro is stuck in the position where they've got a full defensive baby. Leftover is going to be starting. Sanjo blinks in, finds a multi-man fear no evil, and now leftovers. They're just going to reset this fight. No one's even low. Cherio snipes through, gets a couple, Beautiful. and it's going to be jungler coming crashing down as Ducky tries to chase the kills. There's the wing gust out of Isis, and this. now They're they turn around. The perfectly. Everybody's Astro needs to get out. Well, Leftovers is not going to let them. Amaterasu combined with the uh, Athena ult going to bring a lot of damage onto the baby. Jungler puts Ducky to bed. Badger puts a pin into Rapio, and that's two for none. And Leftovers are doubling the kills of I Astro and looking to double their gold as well as the gold fury has started, Kevin. Half-life. This is a huge lead. Kronos and Sanjo, they're, they're going to try and stop this, but Nika's not going to let them taunt yeah. by Badger. He still has his jump, but will he get burst before that is the question. Nope. He'll be able to jump He doesn't have a jump, now. though, when he's slowed. Yeah, now he's, in, eh, now he's in a position of trouble. He's done. Ooh, Cherio just off the mark. Defensive ultimate of the Sanjo will send everybody in leftovers, walk in the opposite direction. Nika that, was left that, out of that, that a little bit. That max CDR but. saved him right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got Breastplate. He's yep. got uh, Joe Inns, uh, just Fear Novial just coming up after it was the initiation in that <laughs> fight, allowing Sanjo to get out. But, I mean, literally, Leftovers are just playing their composition perfectly, and Astro are playing into Leftovers' comp, right? I think it's smart by Astro to try and immediately dive and burst Cherio. That's yes. the key factor. But if they can't do that, they, they have to back off and reset. <laughs> and the problem is, that's not what they're doing right now.
Sanjo, Sanjo no man trouble. though? Nope. Okay, not gonna get chased down though. Jungler in some trouble. I, yeah. He's fine. He's got his ult. He'll I think be able he, to get he, they walked over wards. He knows it's coming. Yeah, he'll be able to get himself out, and that's exactly what he does. And Astro will have some vision over the fire giant for now. They'll trade out wards. 11 wards. Actually, 20 wards plates from leftovers dual lane. Arkyle and Badja leading the leading the mark right there. And you can see, I mean, this... Uh, the ward vision just allows Argyle to push this tower. He knows where everyone is on the map, right? They yep. walk over wards, it's pinged out, and now he takes the tower and backs off. And, I mean, that's one of the big things if you ask any player about ascending to the pro level as opposed to the semi-pro level or high level ranked is the fact of how important vision is because of yes. the way teams move around the map as a unit. It's, it's like uh, you have to know or assume where the jungler is at all times, right? A lot of times a solo mid hunter, they're always on the map, but the sport and jungler, there's the, they're the, the two players roaming the most. And you have to have a base assumption of where they are. Right. And that's based on, you know, knowledge of rotations and jungle, um, assumption of what the jungler is going to do, right? If I'm a hunter and I'm pushed up, mm -hmm. right? And my and the opponent soul laner is pushing my soul laner. Well, I'm I'm the one open to be ganked right now. Exactly. If I don't have vision, I need to respect that and back off. And so, with the information that you don't have and the information you do have, yes. that's really what combines and creates a successful dual lane. So Badger, pretty much the the one at the helm of this team, the captain, the one with the biggest SPL resume. No surprise to me that his dual lane is the They're one grouped up for a taunt and the vision. They need to be careful here. Yeah, and Badger's gonna find three. There's big damage and a Cherio, but the counter gank is strong. Sanjo drops the ultimate, but it means Shell. he has to jump his way out. It's now a four on five with Sanjo underneath the tower. Thor's gonna go up and look for a strong stun as Amaterasu dives the tower, and Jungler combines to take out the mid laner. Oh, and the Jungler from a distance. Great play out of Jungler, as that's the double kill onto the Thor. And now this heal is just keeping Leftovers fresh in the fight. Wolfie's going to rewind, three. but straight into a taunt. It's a three-man. And now Jungler's just going to dive. Tanking Tower going to Aegis is out. And this is fine. This is Leftovers fight to win. Four Take or dead one. for now. And it's going to be a Dia side. Jungler picks up three in that engagement. And not a single player from Leftovers drop. Well played by is Leftovers. This game? And uh, this could be game. Everybody's got a long time. First one up is going to be Rapio in about 14 seconds. But if this... Phoenix goes down, and all we have to deal with they is Nysus. That's game, but Leftovers will want to play it a little safe. Astro oh, wow. doesn't. That's the F6. Leftovers on top. Game number one. It's a best of five, and Leftovers starting off hot. So, I actually, I like both teams' compositions and what mm -hmm. they were going for, right? You have the athena Raw thor combo, which, uh, you know, going to be very aggressive. Try and dive the Isis. Sure. Try and lock them down. Put out a lot of pressure and go for early Gold Furies. Um, allow the other team to fight into you, reset the fight with heals, and then go back. But the problem was that Astro, their comp was good as well, mm -hmm. but they, they, they played the Leftovers game, right? Yeah, exactly. Too many players built hyper tanky. They didn't have the damage to lock down Cherio at the start of the fight, which is, was their goal. You, you constantly saw Sanjo blinking on him, but he built Breastplate, and no one else could follow up, and Cherio just reset and... It was just perfect play. Exactly. I really, I, I love the composition out of Astro. And again, to, just to stress on what you keep saying, uh, they played the enemy game instead of their own game. They had a specific pace that they needed to follow. Thor is going to set the pace of the game, and we'll see how this one started. Oh, he got five off the boards. The pace. Yeah. Oh, that's just savage. <laughs> And Chero's going to come over here and just watch this, lining up. He sees it perfectly. And it's just the takes slow, too. Right? Kratos yeah. has no boots online. He gets slowed by the Divine Light, and it's a free setup for his ultimate. Mm -hmm. he, set, he set himself up. He didn't yeah. even need the time. No, not at all. Just understood exactly where, where people want to go, were going to go. And Nika, out of the solo lane, is the player with the play of the game. We'll take a look at this one as we see very early in the game, and Nika off to a great start. Yeah, a lot of rotations from him. Uh, obviously got bullied a little bit at you know the first couple levels mm -hmm. by the Mana. Didn't matter too much. You know, Nico was just in every single team fight. Yeah. We didn't see him sitting there farming his lane, being left alone. He made sure that, you know, Amaterasu is this team fighting god, right? Without Provide, a it, you know, provides a lot of passives um, to your team, bonus power, bonus movement speed, as well as being a, a, a very good frontline tool with mm -hmm. damage mitigation in her kit. Um, she could silence as well, and he just made sure to use his god appropriately. Exactly, and that's sort of what I was getting at before uh, when, during picks and bans when we were talking about Amaterasu is that this god is really what you make of her. You can take a look at some of the other solo lane gods and, you know, not to say they pilot themselves, but a lot of it is just this is a good pick. I mean, that's a good pick, right? Uh, Amaterasu is really up to how much you're going to to put into her and, and, and make use of, of her during the team fight, specifically with that uh, the passive or the auras that her first ability gives. So that's a very big deal when you're playing Amaterasu. And for leftovers... It worked out, but before...